Thanks for joining me guys. Today I'm going to show you how to do the Orton effect to add that dreamy glow to your landscape photographs. Let's get started. All right, so we have our photograph opened in Photoshop. We've already completed our basic edits to the contrast, color, we've done dodging and burning. Now we just wanna finish it off with the Orton effect to add that dreamy glow to the final image. So let's take a look. Now the first thing we wanna do is stamp our layer. And basically what we do is just create a separate layer for all of the adjustments we've already completed. And that'll be our base layer for the Orton effect. So we'll hold down Shift, Option, Command, and E. And you can see here our new layer is created and we'll rename that layer Orton. And we'll go to filter now, go to blur, Gaussian blur. And depending on the camera you use, you can adjust the blur up and down. So let's say you have a modern camera, something with 24 to 36 megapixels, something between 25 and 30 will work well. So we'll go with 28. Click enter. So now our layer is blurred. The next thing to do is to adjust the brightness and contrast. Now there are a lot of ways to do this. You can use levels, you can use curves, but the easiest way to do this is by going to image adjustments, brightness and contrast. We're going to crank the contrast up all the way to 100 and the brightness normally will do about 10 but for the demonstration so we can see it through uh, the screen a little bit easier, I'm going to bump it up to 20. So we'll do 120, click OK. And the next thing we want to do is, you can see how it's a blurry mess and there's just way too much contrast now. We're going to dial that all the way down till the opacity is zero. So you can see here in this section, we've dialed it to zero. And a good starting point is 10. And from here, you can go up and down between 10 and 20. For this, we'll keep it at around 14 or 15. Looks pretty good there. Now, I'm going to crank it up again just for demonstration purposes so you can see what's going on. We'll go with 35. I'll zoom in a little bit here. Actually, let's bring it back down to 25. And I'll change the layer off and on just by clicking this eye right here. This is before and this is after. You can see the canyon light here has a nice glow to it now and the wall of the canyon also has a nice glow to it. Another nice benefit of the Orton effect other than getting that dreamy glow is we can see here before we click the Orton on the light is reflecting off of the wall which is wet giving us too harsh of a highlight here so what it does when we turn it on is it just softens that highlight which is another added benefit of the Orton effect. And that's our basic effect. A lot of people like to bring back the sharpness of the image because the image just blurs it a little bit too much. One way you can do that is by adding a layer mask and using luminosity masks. Normally I'll use the Tony Kuiper luminosity mask panel um, to make my luminosity masks, but today I'll show you how to manually make a mask if you don't have that panel. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go to select and we'll go down to color range and we'll go to select here and you have the option to select different colors and you can also select highlight midtones and shadows so what we want to do is limit the orton effect just to the highlight so we'll select highlights we'll change the fuzziness here you can see as we move the fuzziness up and down it either increases or decreases the amount of highlights that will be affected by the orton effect so you can see if we drag it down only a few of the highlights and if we pull it up more of the highlights will be affected by the Orton effect and then range we can go up and down on that we can see it's going to be just another way to control how much of a mask we want for the Orton effect so we'll do it there 
and make sure your selection preview is clicked to grayscale. Once we have our settings for our color range, we're going to click OK. When you click OK, we now see that the marching ants have appeared. And now what we want to do is change that selection into a mask. So you can see at the bottom here where I'm moving my mouse. We'll add that and we'll click this button to add the layer mask. And now you can see when we toggle off and on with the Orton effect, it's a much more subtle effect and it's only affecting our highlights. So let's zoom in here. We'll turn it off and on. So there's off and there's on with the layer mask affecting only the highlights. And now let's disable that layer mask. We can see when we go off and on, there's off. And now we're on with the Orton. It affects the whole picture, but when we turn that layer mask back on, it dials it down so that only those highlights are affected. The Orton effect is really nice, and sometimes it works really well for the entire picture, but we want to make sure that we don't overdo it Otherwise, it's just going to give us a blurry mess that is just way too obvious that we did the Orton effect. Um, so make sure you control that effect up and down to where it's subtle, but still helping your photograph tell the story. So that's one way to adjust the Orton effect. Another way is you can bring back the sharpness of the Orton effect with a high pass filter. So let's show you how to do that. We'll delete the layer mask. So with the layer mask deleted, you can see we're back to our Orton effect affecting the entire picture. Sometimes it's a little bit too blurry and we don't want that blur overpowering the image and we want to bring some of that sharpness back. So we have our Orton layer. Let's turn that off and let's create another stamp layer. So we'll click Shift, Option, Command, E. Gives us another copy of our image before the Orton layer. We'll turn our Orton image back on and now we'll select a new layer and we'll rename that High Pass. So we turn that on, we'll change the blend mode to soft light, and we'll run a high pass filter. So now we'll go to filter, other, high pass, and we'll select a radius of five. We don't want to go overboard with it, uh, but we'll go with a starting point of five, click OK. And now we can see when we turn the high pass on, we get some of that sharpness back we can toggle the opacity off and on on that as well. So 20 looks pretty good. And now we get some of that sharpness back. Let's turn it into a group now. To turn that into a group, we just click Command G and we'll click Orton Final. And again, we'll go off and back on. That looks pretty dreamy. And that's all for the Orton effect. Again, you want to keep in mind it adds that really nice dreamy glow look to your photograph, but don't overdo it. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a blurry mess that just looks way too obvious that you did the Orton effect. Well, that's all I have for the Orton effect today, guys. I hope it really helps you in your landscape photography. If you enjoyed that tip, make sure to click subscribe and ring the notification bell for more tips tricks and camera gear reviews. Until next time, take care and have a good day.